and we're back in black playing pathfinding kingmaker and today we're going to talk about the arcane trickster now who is the arcane trickster roleplaying wise well roleplaying wise he's kind of like the love shot between the rogue and the wizard he knows how to lock pick and stuff like that and maybe he's the guy who sneaks into a mansion and uses his magic to maybe disarm some traps from afar and stuff like that using his thing called a ledger domain and that's kind of his entire idea behind this character that he is that ranged uh wizard type thief type of character and he also has this ability in the actual game an arcane trickster can use trickery at a range of 30 feet which makes him very adept at uh disarming traps so he doesn't have to stand close to the trap if it happens to trigger and you know a fireball comes out of it or something like that so how strong is he if we talk combat prowess versus utility as we always do i'll put him at 100 percent combat prowess and 30 percent utility 30 percent utility coming from both the fact that depending on what spell class you might pick up you might be an intelligence based arcane caster so you might have a lot of skill points there and you also have a good progression of skills from arcane trickster in itself because arcane trickster has a kind of bad progression on their base attack bonus uh, because they're kind of like a uh, continuation of the bard or the rogue in a way. Uh, but they gain very good saves. They gain both a good reflex save and a good will save. They kind of lack on the, in the fortitude save apart department, unfortunately. But, most importantly about the arcane trickster. They actually get one uh, spell level progression per level in this spell... <laughs> in the arcane class that enable you to go into arcane tricks that's very complicated to say but essentially here i picked up wizard so i will keep progressing my spells from the wizard uh, but i won't be able to pick up uh, like later wizard abilities but the wizard's abilities for some depending on what school you go into they're not that relevant and there's a couple of ways let's talk about how to get into arcane trickster because i'm already <laughs> already starting to go that route so you need trickery for mobility for two sneak attack die be able to cast second level arcane spells and knowledge arcana for so there's a couple of ways of course you can go into this i think the easiest way of course is to go rogue and then pick up uh, there's a rogue subclass i think it's called eldritch rogue or something like that and that's one way of doing it, but the Elder Rogue has a bad progression of spells, and I don't really like going that route. I think this way that I did here is, in my opinion, a little bit... <laughs> a little bit superior, in my opinion. Yeah, we go 3-level Wizard, because the Wizard has the fastest progression of spells, and when we eventually get into Arcane Trickster, we'll keep up leveling this up. And what's so good about this is that essentially we're only kind of losing one level. Let me explain. So... Uh, wizard has the fastest progression of spells. If you compare this to the sorcerer, which gets fourth levels or second level spells at fourth level, uh, the wizard gains at third level. So they're already one level ahead of a normal sorceress. And then you need one level of rogue to get a sneak attack die, one level of alchemist vivisectionist to get another sneak attack die. But then when you spec into arcane trickster, starting from the first level, you will get spells as if you were a wizard or as if you leveled up your wizard which is, i think is very very nice because if you compare this to the eldritch knight the eldritch knight is to wait one more level until they're able to uh, progress in their normal spells so essentially if you compare this to a sorceress you will only be one level behind a sorceress in your spell progression and you also get the additional benefits of going into arcane tricksters i quite like that a lot uh, I would say the problem with the class is that it's kind of pigeonholed, in my opinion, into one strategy. Uh, if you want to use the Arcane Tricks, and if you really want to benefit from uh, him having Sneak Attack die, because he gets Sneak Attack die in the same way as the Rogue does every second level, that totally will pick up 5 Sneak Attack die. Uh, if you want to use them, of course you can use them regular attacks, but I don't recommend that, because this guy is, of course, geared towards unfair difficulty, and unfair difficulty, if you die, I mean, it's true for every difficulty, but if you die, it's such a hassle, and it's so easy to die in unfair when all the damage is doubled and everything, that I'd much prefer to have this guy out of combat, but how do you Sneak Attack, you know, from afar? Well, you can use that to can do that with ranged touch attacks, which can pick up a lot from the wizard spellbook. And the spells are kind of good in by themselves. And as I said, you're only essentially going to be one level behind a sorceress. So as long as you're using spells which are ranged touch attacks, you're going to get the extra bonus damage from your sneak attack die. Uh, and that will probably, in total, be higher than any normal sorceress. But like if you compare it to an arc, for instance. But the difference will be that the arc will have a much easier time hitting stuff with ranged touch attacks. Even though you attacked the ranged, ranged touch AC compared to the normal AC, which is much lower, it will still be more likely, I think, to miss on average uh, because it's your progression of base attack bonus is not that high. 
so unless you're buffed up, you're probably gonna miss a little bit more, but when you actually hit with this thing, you're going to deal more damage, which is quite nice. This class also has a thing called the Impromptu Sneak Attacks, which kind of makes him circumvent the usual requirements for going into a sneak attack. So usually when you sneak attack, you need to either be flanking someone, or that target needs to be blinded, or you need to be invisible, or something that makes you able to uh, attack him without him seeing you. That's kind of the idea behind a sneak attack, right? So this guy can enter a impromptu sneak attack. Uh, he picks this ability up from level 3, and then he gets additional rounds of this uh, 4 in total, and you, you can see here the progression. Uh, initial round here, additional round here, additional round here, which is quite nice. He also gains Invisible Thief, which makes him able to uh, go into Greater Invisibility. And if you compare this to Normal Invisibility, Normal Invisibility breaks whenever you attack, Greater Invisibility does not. So you can stay in this Greater Invisibility form, and all your attacks will be sneak attacks. But keep in mind, if you use a ranged touch attack like Scorching Ray, for instance, which shoots four rays, you will only get sneak attack on the first ray. I thought it was on every ray, but apparently it's only on the first ray. So that's uh, also important to note. Uh, so this is quite nice, but if you go the wizard route, you will have greater invisibility anyway, so this will just be a little bit of gravy on top, you will get even more uses. You can, you can already call cost uh, greater invisibility on yourself with wizard. But invisible thief is quite a nice ability. You also get surprise spells, uh, whenever you cut someone flat-footed with any spell, you will deal additional sneak attack damage. So at level 16, when you pick this up, uh, keep in mind though that most playthroughs end at level 15, 16, 17, so you'll probably get to level 10, but this will be at the very last boss. But you'll be able to cast something like, I don't know, Finger of Death or something. <laughs> Finger of Death as a surprise spell with increased sneak attack die, which is quite insane. <laughs> if you get that damage off, it will be, I don't know, 200 damage or something. 250 damage or something. Uh, so that's quite insane, you can deal a lot of damage with this, but it is... Mm, it is a little bit difficult because you need to be in greater invisibility, which you will be able to cast though. Uh, and they need to be flat footed. But then you can deal quite a lot of damage. So, in summary, I think the Arcane Trickster is a decently good class. But he's kind of pigeonholed into one strategy. I don't think it's generally good. I don't think like, oh, I go Wizard and then I always go into Arcane Trickster because I get this sneak attack die. Nah, you need to spec into Dexterity and stuff to make this work and you need to... Uh, think a little bit around your character, but if you think a little bit around your character, you can make the Arcane Trickster into quite a potent damage dealer while still being a good skill monkey and stuff like that. Also, I want to mention before we end this guide uh, how I went into this. I went into Wizard uh, and then I picked up Idlekin. I think this is quite a nice, nice trick because, uh, of course, if you go into Wizard, you will have a earlier or a better early game uh, than if you do, for instance, a melee class, which is why I don't recommend starting off as either alchemist or rogue, I definitely recommend starting off as a wizard. Because if you start off as a wizard, you can do spell specialization burning hands, and that can get you through the early game, especially if this is your main character, this is true. Uh, and here I picked up Idlekin so that I get summon ages ally level 3, and then I picked up wizard, and I get what the conjurer for two reasons, because the conjurers get a, a ranged touch attack ability as a innate ability in them, which can use uh, I think 3 plus your intelligence modifier, and also get one extra round per half your wizard level on any uh, summoning spells. And this is very good, especially on level 1, level 2, where your summoner's ally will only last like one or two rounds. If you can get an extra round on summoner's ally, that can maybe make it easier to get through the early game. Also, you can pick up uh, a company sneak attacker to get a little bit of extra sneak attack die. Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that was all I wanted to say about the Arcane Trickster. In summary, I think it's a solid class, a little bit pigeonholed, but I, yeah, I would give it a medium rating. I think it's good. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.